this whole business of fungal biomass, bacterial biomass. Again, I want to stress both are important. But when, when we have a garden, we have a suburban lot where the soil has been bulldozed away, we're starting basically at, at zero. Bacteria are on that scene completely. The fungi are not. And as, as we get into more, into less disturbed scenarios, gardens that are mulched, gardens that are worked with cover crops in the right way, um, the berry plantings, the fruit orchard, there becomes more organic matter growing. And when I talk about the forest edge, I'm, I'm picturing things like raspberry and goldenrod, and succession species of trees falling over. There's now lignans on the scene. Fungi can thrive. And that scenario is where that fungal biomass starts to get to be 10 times greater. That fungal biomass is made up of the decomposition fungi and also the mycorrhizal fungi. So mycorrhizal, as a word, myco, the first part refers to the fungal realm. Rhizal, rhiza, refers to the root realm. So now I am talking about fungi that have a symbiotic relationship with plants. So when you see or hear the term mycorrhiza, I'm not, I'm not naming the fungi. I'm not naming the host plant which has an association with the fungi. I'm, I'm, I'm actually describing the union of the two. So mycorrhizae are about the union of fungi with roots. This picture is of <clears throat> the nutrient transfer mechanism of what are known as endomycorrhizae. They actually penetrate into the root of the plant. And, and these structures are called arbuscules. Let's just step back a minute and look at that. Um, you might see a tree. Some of you might think, oh, that's <coughs> a feeder root system of a plant. Some of you maybe have some medical knowledge, and you're thinking, that looks a lot like the alve alveoli in our lungs, where oxygen is transferred. All three of those, to my mind, it's fitting to uh, think about this in terms of, of what herbalists call the doctrine of signatures. So doctrine of signatures is, a, is an old <coughs> practice, and it's, it's kind of more intuitive. But it, it's, it's looking at a plant and recognizing maybe the shape of its leaf reminds you of the lump. Maybe there's some aspect that makes you think of the heart and it suggests itself as a medicine for what's to come. Um, when I look at these arbuscules inside the cells of the root of a plant, I recognize I'm looking at something to do with life on Earth, that, that, that this is how it's possible that we evolved, that all life evolved, and, and this fungal root connection is really one of the key springboards to that kind of idea. So just from that doctrine of signatures perspective, it's really, really important <laughs> that we, in our stewardship, make this connection possible for trees. Just the fact that mycorrhizal fungi are colonizing the root system of the plant <coughs> means that there's not so much room for root pathogens. So for a fruit grower, things like crown rot, root rot, are being kept at bay because the fungi are the dominant species in that rhizosphere. We're gonna learn how mycorrhizal fungi gather nutrients for plants, and that, in effect, increases their volume reach in a certain volume of soil. Um, we're going to see how there's a direct tie-in to reserve energy that boosts healthy plant metabolism to go all the way. We're going to learn about mycelial messaging, how one plant affected by an issue can tell other plants to get prepared. We're going to learn that this is really the core way that an ecosystem is resilient. And, and finally, the fact that mycorrhizal fungi store carbon in the soil. And, and when we talk about climate change and we talk about fossil fuel use and then we have to cut that down, the other big part of that storyline of solving that is just restoring degraded soils everywhere making them healthy plant places because there's something that takes place in this fungus root union that takes care of that issue. 95% of the plants on this planet have this affiliation with mycorrhizal fungi. At one time, every plant did. 
And now I'm going back to the origins, where this all started. The earth was covered with water, and some algae landed in a tidal pool. And in that water, there was the first fungal organisms as well. And over the course of time, somehow, the algae, without a root system, made a deal with the fungi where this car carbon trade began. And over the course of time, some plants have lost this affiliation. And, and that's more to do with extreme habitat. So for gardeners, um, anything in the coal family, broccoli, cabbage, doesn't have a mycorrhizal affiliation. When you grow buckwheat as a cover crop, buckwheat does not carry forward the mycorrhizal affiliation that might have been there. So there's a lot of nuance to this. But the part I want to focus on is 95% of plants have this. So, yes, I'm talking here about the apple tree, or whatever fruit tree you want me to be saying, berries. But I'm also talking about tomatoes, and potatoes, and onions, and garlic. And when you start to recognize how you can make your garden more fungal, this is what you're doing. This is what you're trying to bring about. 